All right, this uh, chemistry of use to go over redox reactions. It'll help you study for your quiz tomorrow. If any of you guys are interested, I'm doing a crash course review for honors chemistry for the final exam on Monday from 4.30 to 7.30 at Embassy Suites. If you're interested in attending, you can come see me tomorrow for more details. I'll explain what you need to do uh, to go. Okay, just let me know. All right, so first and foremost, oxidation numbers. When we go to assign oxidation numbers, one of the things we have to pay attention to is rules that we need to know. Any group 1 element is always going to be plus 1. Any group 2 element in the periodic table is always plus 2. Boron and aluminum are always 3 plus. And then finally, fluorine is always minus 1. The other rule that you need to be aware of is hydrogen is plus 1 except when it's combined with a metal. So that would be like if I had, for example, CaH2. That is the only time if you see hydrogen behind a metal, very rare, it would be minus 1. Oxygen is 2 minus, except when it's in a peroxide. For example, like H2O2, you notice the double twos. Then that is the only time where the oxidation number uh, for oxygen is negative 1. Elements, just regular elements by themselves, are going to be 0. Keep in mind, diatomic elements are elemental in form. So N2, O2, F2, H2, Cl2, Br2, and I2 are, are uh, elemental in form as well. They have an oxidation number of zero. Ions that basically are from a element, come from a single element like Fe2+, the oxidation number is the exact same thing as its charge. Now, if you look here on the periodic table, this is just what I was talking about. Group 1 is all plus 1. Group 2 is all plus 2. Boron and aluminum are always 3 plus. Fluorine is minus 1. If you look here, you were supposed to memorize this earlier in the year. Zinc is 2 plus. Silver is plus 1, and cadmium is 2 plus. So those are ones that never change. And everything else is pretty much variable when we go through here. So and that's what we'll talk about. Um, one key thing they ask about is what is oxidation, what is reduction? An easy way I remember it is oil rig. Oxidation, oil means oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So if you remember oil rig, it makes it really easy to do a redox reaction. One of the first things you have to be able to do is when elements are in a compound, you have to be able to assign oxidation numbers. So if you look like this, for example, I start with S2O3. If I look, if it had a charge, the charge would be listed up here, but there's no charge. So when I go to do the math for this, this is how I do it. I set this thing is equal to zero. What you're always missing one of them doesn't have a rule. So you use the rules that we know to solve for the unknown one in case S doesn't have a rule in this case. So I'm going to say oxygen is negative 2. So then what I do is I multiply down. Negative 2, this is X, what I'm solving for. Negative 2 times 3, negative 6, plus, in this case, X times 2, 2X. So then what I do is I just solve for X. Move this over, I get positive 6, divide by 2. That means S the oxidation number of S would be 3. Oxidation number of oxygen would be 2. So the first one is 3, 2. Next one, when I go to do it, MnO4 minus. If I go MnO4 minus, now when I look, this actually has a charge of minus. So I have to use that in my math. So when I do the setup, I set the sucker equal to negative 1. Oxygen still has a rule. It's negative 2. So I'm going to go negative 2 times 4 is going to give me negative 8 plus, in this case, x is what I'm solving for. Drop it down right here. Boom. Then what I do is to get x by itself, I move the 8 over. I have a positive 8 plus a negative 1. x is going to be 7. So this would be 7. This would be 2 negative. So 7 plus. You want to do that. If you're trying to find a uh, transitional metal with a halogen, easy way to remember it is this. If it's a halogen with a metal, it's not negative 1. Just think about it like that. So th this thing has no charge overall, so it's equal to 0. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. This is x times 1 is going to be x. Slide it over. Fe is going to be 3 plus. Cl minus is going to be 1 minus. I go to the next one. AsO4, 3 minus. So I go AsO4, 3 minus. The overall charge is 3 minus. Then I put negative 2 up here because I know oxygen, so 2 times 4 is going to be negative 8. This is x, drop it down there, x, slide that over, it's going to be positive 8, this has to be 5. So you see that's basically what I do I, when I go and assign oxidation numbers. I'll do one more. When I look here, I have CrO2, Cr2, 
O7 to minus. Overall has to equal to minus. I know this is negative 2, so I'm going to just multiply negative 2 times 7, and I'm going to get negative 14 plus, and then x, this is going to be 2x. So then I slide this over here. I'm going to get positive 14 plus a negative 2 is going to be 12 when I'm all said and done. Divide that by 2, x has to be 6. Doing a little bit of math there, a little 6. Oxygen is negative 2, I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, the key thing is one of the things they ask you to do is who, identify who's oxidized and who's reduced. What do you do when that? When you're doing that? When you go to do that, you look at the individual equation. You don't really care about the coefficients. If it's an element by itself, this is what I see when I look at this. This is an element by itself, and that's an element by itself. So automatically, I know the oxidation number. That's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. This is the one where I have to actually use the method I just you just saw. I use the rule for chlorine with a metal. It's going to be minus one. So this whole thing is going to be negative two. It's equal to zero, which means that has to be positive two, right, for that one. If I look over here, I know Na is plus one from the rule. Na is all group one metal. That's going to make that minus one. Once you assign the oxidation numbers, the idea is you have to figure out who's been oxidized and who's reduced. How do you do that? Well, the easiest way to think about it is think about it like this. Think of a vertical number line. Whenever we have an oxidation, the oxidation number goes up. It could start at negative 4, go up to 0. Anytime it increases on the number line, that's an oxidation. A reduction is going from like 2 to 0. That would be a reduction from going from negative 1 to negative 3. So when you look at the numbers, the things that usually don't change are H and O. It's very rare unless there's H2 and O2. So when I look at this, it's not really present anyway, but what I notice is... Sodium has an oxidation number of 0 right here and 1 right there. I'm going to call that an oxidation because the number went up. It went from 0 to positive 1. That is an oxidation. If I look, Fe goes from 2 plus to 0. That is going to be a reduction. The other thing they want you to be able to spot is if something is an oxidizing agent or reducing agent. Just think like double James Bond or a double agent. If this is a reduction, I write right underneath oxy agent. So what am I really saying? Well, if they're asking me who is reduced or who's the oxidizing agent, it would be FeCl2. That would be the species. We're talking about the species on the reactant side. If they ask me who is oxidized, I would say Na. Who the reducing agent is, red agent underneath, I would say Na as well because it's the same thing. It's oxidized. It's also called the reducing agent. Just think the opposite. Okay? So that's how we apply it there. Look at this one. Element by itself, zero. H2 diatomic, zero. Which means I have to use the system I showed you for oxidation numbers here. H is plus one. This is negative two. If you do a little math, you figure out that that's five. When you come over here and look at this, this is a little unusual for an uh, oxidation reaction. I have copper and I have nitrogen, two unknowns. That's really kind of unrare. Rare. It's, it's not really done in redox reactions, but we'll go with it anyway. If you know nitrates minus one, the overall polyatomic ion, a little review from earlier chem, if you know that's minus one, you kind of already know that copper has to be plus one in this case. So then when I go to fill in the rest of it, do the exact same thing. So what I do here is this is going to be negative two. Do the math here. This comes out to be five. Then what happens is I look for the numbers to change. Well, copper goes from 0 to plus 1. That would be an oxidation. I notice hydrogen goes from 1 plus to 0. That would be a reduction. So then when I go to label these, if this is a reduction, it's also the oxidizing agent. If this is an oxidation, it's also the reducing agent. So if they ask me on the test, who's the reducing agent? Copper. Who's oxidized? Copper. Who is the reduction or who's being reduced? The species is HNO3. It's also the oxidizing agent in the case of the reaction. Now, here's one more example. If I notice diatomic 0, Br diatomic 0, this is going to be H is plus 1, Br is minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. So we see Cl goes from 0 to negative 1. That's going to be a reduction and an oxy agent. Uh, Br goes from minus 1 to 0. That's an oxidation. I don't know if I can fit it in here. And a reducing agent. 
that's what you need to do. That's easy. It's just easy. Just assign the oxidation numbers. One will go up, one has to go down for an oxidation reaction. Sometimes they will give you ones and they'll ask you, hey, is this a redox reaction? This one's already done. You go through and you assign the numbers you go through. If you notice, sodium's plus one, plus one there. Oxygen's two minus, two minus. Hydrogen's plus one, plus one. No one, even sulfur is six and six. That's how you know it's not a redox reaction. In order for it to be a redox reaction, one has to go up and one has to go down. All right, last thing you need to be able to do, I use a, little, a quick little thing to remember. It's called eating old hibachi chicken cold sucks. So E-O-H, check C, explain that in a second, C-S. So if you write this on your test, you'd go E-O-H-C-C-S. It's a quick little way to remember what the different steps are. The first step is you balance the elements, which I'll show you. Second step, we normally balance oxygen. Like this isn't normal balancing equations. Oxygen and hydrogen are special. So like we balance O by busting out H2O. Unusual, but you just have to pay attention to it. We balance H by using H+. Plus, and then we balance charge by using electrons. And then it's all about canceling and simplifying and then finally summing the last two steps. So let's take a look at one of these. I look at the reaction. Who am I going to balance? Well, if I notice, I have P on one side and H2PO4 or minus on the other. So that's going to be one set that I'm going to balance. H2PO4 minus. Then I'm going to take copper 2 plus, arrow to copper as a solid. E stands for balancing the elements. So I look at the elements. Phosphorus is good. One phosphorus, one phosphorus. H and the O's don't match, but I get those on the next one. One copper, one copper. So my E is done. Check it. So I check that off. Done. Old or oxygen. If I notice here, I have four oxygens here. So I have to come over here. I'm going to add four waters. So I had four waters on that side. So now I have four oxygens, four oxygens. Done. This doesn't have any oxygen. Next is H. When I go to balance H's, if I notice I have four it goes coefficient times subscript, so 4 times 2 gives me 8, but I already have 2 over here, so I need 6 more. So how do I balance H's? By adding 6H+. plus. Next, charge. When I go to balance charge, you have to pay attention to this. This is what you, how you want to think about it. Uh, that's why I put the, told you to put the check. Check charge or check the coefficient. The way it works is don't forget the coefficient. When you go to figure out charge, it goes coefficient times the charge, which would be listed there. Coefficient times the charge. Coefficient times the charge. Coefficient times the charge. So what do you see when I do it? If you notice, 4 times 0, that's going to be 0. 1 times 0, 0. So the overall charge on this side is 0. This is 1, and this is negative, so this contributes a negative 1 charge. 1 times the negative there. 6 times a positive. Overall, this is 6 plus. When I get this all together, overall, my overall charge in this case is 5 plus. So when it's all said and done, I get 5 plus. When I drop down to the bottom side, if you notice here, this is 1 times 2 plus, which is going to give me 2 plus. 1 times 0 is 0. The key with adding electrons is you add them to whichever side is higher. 0 and 5, 5 is higher. i got to bring it down to 0, so I add 5 electrons on this side thus making the charge on this side 0 and 0. This side's 2 and 0, so I add 2 electrons on this side. The other thing you can pay attention to is the, you, on each one, the electrons have to be added on separate sides. So I have 2 electrons here, 5 electrons here. I balance charge. Next thing is cancel. You have to be able to cancel your electrons using the lowest common multiplier. Whenever you balance a redox reaction, the electrons have to cancel. So notice I have 2 and 5, they don't cancel. So what am I going to do? That's where I'm going to bust out the little multiplier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my multiplier. In this case, I'm going to multiply by 2 to this one because the lowest common multiplier is 10, and this one is 5. So when I multiply this by 2, this is going to be 8, 2, 2, 12, and 10. This is going to be 10. 5 and 5. The next step is I have to simplify. Well, first I have to cancel the electrons and then sum. So if I go back over here, 
my electrons cancel, they have to erase. I can't, so if I have 10 here and 10 here, whoops, bam, I raise the 10 electrons, 10 electrons. Then I go back to the business of taking care of everything else. I see if anything else, I basically check to simplify waters and H2s, or H pluses. So if I look here, there's eight waters, but there's no waters on the right to simplify. So I just, I call it Tetris, like the game Tetris, it just falls down to the answer line, eight H2O. Check uh, H pluses to see if they're the same, on, if there's some on both sides, there's not. So I drop 12 H pluses on the bottom. Everything else just falls. This has nothing else that's um, similar. So I'm gonna just drop it, doesn't matter what order, just has to be on the left hand side. Arrow, then I get five Cu plus, and then I'll just drop it down here for space, two H2 PO4 minus. And there I have my balanced, that's how I know I have a balanced, um, uh, balanced equation there, that's my balanced redox reaction. So let's try it again with this one. Eating old hibachi chicken cold sucks. So eating old hibachi chicken, check the charge, cold sucks. So when I go to do this, I'm gonna take Cl minus and Cl2 go together. So I go Cl minus, arrow, Cl2, ClO3 minus, ClO2. The first thing is elements, check the elements. The only element here is chlorine. I got two on this side and one on this side. This will make you crazy if you don't put the two there. I put the two, one chlorine, one chlorine, elements are done. I'm on to O using water. No O's, one, two O's, and O3 on this side. So I add one water, done. H's, no H's, two H's, so I add two H plus to this side, done. Now it's time for me to do charge. Coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge. So let's see what I got when I do that. Two times a negative one is gonna be negative two on this side. This is gonna be zero. So I add two electrons on this side. Now it's negative two and I'm balanced. This is gonna be two times a positive two, which is a positive one, which is gonna be two. One times this, that's going to be a negative one. Overall, I'm going to end up with a positive one when I'm all said and done and I simplify. This is zero and zero. So I have a positive one and zero. So I add one electron on this side and I'm balanced with my charge on this. Done. Then I have to cancel the electrons. Do my electrons cancel? They do not. I have two electrons here, one there. So I go two. This is going to be four, two, two, and two. My electrons get erased because they cancel. Two electrons gone, two electrons gone. Now what I do is anything else left over, in this case, Tetris is down to the answer line. So four H pluses, plus two Cl minus, plus two ClO3 minus, arrow Cl2, plus two ClO2, plus two waters. Bam, done. That's how you balance it. All right, last one. Same thing with this one. I go CrO4, two minus, arrow, Cr3 plus, and SO3, two minus, SO4, two minus. I ignore H plus and OH, because they'll or H2O, because they'll take care of themselves as we go. Other elements, so E, O, H, C, C, S. Chromium, chromium, good, check. Sulfur, sulfur, done. Oxygen, I have four here, so I need to add four waters on that side. I have three oxygens and four, I add one water on this side. Done balancing oxygen. Balance H's. I have a total of eight H's on this side, so I add eight H plus on this side. I have a total of two H's on this side, so I add two H pluses here. Done. Then I go to do charge. When I go to do charge, I go coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge, coefficient, charge. Same thing here. Get tired of saying it. Getting here. And so then next, um, so then next what I do is um, uh, I do coefficient times charge is going to be positive 8. 1 times this is going to be negative 2. So overall this is going to be 6. 
1 times 3 is going to be positive 3, and this is going to be 0. So I have 6 and a positive 3. The side that's higher is this side, so I add 3 electrons to this. I bring it down to positive 3 and positive 3. This side is going to be 1 times this is negative 2 for the whole side. This is going to be equal to 0. So what I do to get this to cancel is I add or the number of, to can, cancel the charge out. If this side is negative 2, this is 0. I bust out two more electrons, and then I end up making this side negative 2. My electrons now, I've balanced charge. I have to cancel 3 and 2. So what I have to do is I have to, the lowest common multiplier is 6. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2, this whole thing by 3. So this is going to make this 6. This is going to make this, I need to rewrite this actually. This is going to make this 16, 2, 2, and 8 when I multiply it through. 3, 3, 3. This is going to make this 6, and this is going to make this 6 for the electrons. Now my electrons cancel. Gone. Let me erase this so it doesn't confuse you. Um, gone. My electrons are gone. Now I check, before I do anything else, I check the H pluses. 16 on this side, 6 on this side. So I take the smaller number 6, subtract from both sides. What that ultimately is going to give me is 10 H plus. Done. 3 waters on this side, 8 waters on that side. Subtract it from there. 3 minus 8, I'm going to end up with 5 waters there. And then ultimately, what do I have left over? I have 3SO3, 2 minus, and then I have 2CRO4, 2 minus, 2CR3 plus, and then finally 3SO4, 2 minus. Boom. That's how you balance a redox reaction. All right? Hope it helps. Just remember E-O-H-C-C-S. We balance E, just balance elements like you normally do. O is always adding water. H is adding H+. Plus. C, cancel the electrons. Remember, coefficient charge. Coefficient charge. Cancel the electrons and then finally simplify and sum. You guys have a good evening. Good luck with your test.